it going? Good. Us? How you doing? Yeah. Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Jordan. I can remember that. Nigeria. 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 Yes. Nice to meet you. you can remember that. It's, I can never hear it. Let's move this off. Yeah, it's now, a little distracting. Yeah. Now, we we do know that we're in, we're, we're talking about Hollywood horror films. Uh-huh. Okay. And I really, it just, it, I've, 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 I've heard it, and, and I think I want to know what your thoughts is. Do we actually consider Get Out a horror film? What a great question. <laughs> well, uh, personally, I never did. I, I don't either. <laughs> That's what um, but it was produced by Blumhouse, which has got a reputation of making horror films. Correct. Correct. And they know how, what, they do a lot of things well at Blumhouse, but one of the things they do is they know how to make their money back from the world. <laughs> and uh, so, I don't know how Jordan hooked up with them, but it seemed like a really great fit because I think Jason Blum was really smart about seeing what he had yeah. right from the start. Yeah. Um, and I, I read, you know, I, I'm so proud of that movie. I don't think it's a horror movie. I think it's a, I think the term Jordan used for it eventually was social growth. Yeah. That's you know, yeah. And I think that's, <laughs> that's the right, but you know, what is genre, right? It's like, it's your interpretation of something. So yeah. I, I just think it's a, I, I think it's a thriller and I think it's a thriller with a really great social point. Yeah. And the, the thing is, is that you can, if you want to see it as a horror movie, it works as a horror movie. If you want to see it as a, as a thriller, it works as that. Mostly, if you want to see it as a comedy, it works as yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, even in a, in a very sly way. So yeah. that's what, that's why it's a great film to me, is that it, it's an ability to gen, bend genres. You're talking about Jordan Peele. I mean, this guy wear all of the hats in his, in his films. I want to know what type of relationship you guys have and, and a more or less trust process into letting you be one of the seats at the table. No. Great questions. So he's a great guy. He he's just like he comes off in interviews. He's both he's both the funniest, but also the smartest guy in the room. You know, and so like nothing gets nothing gets past him. You know, he's, and that's really um, and he's very observational. I think like he, he really kind of sees everything and processes. So. I, and I, it's a huge honor to me that he trusts me to be at the table um, because he genuinely wants creative collaboration. He's a person who, he knows, he has a vision, and he knows what he wants, but he also, because he has the confidence of that vision, he wants others to contribute to that to make it even better. So he always gives me really great, um, really great direction, um, and direction that's like, like, like inspires you to you know to live up to what we talked about. And we'll have a great talk, and then like, oh, now I got to now I got to make that happen. You know? <laughs> so, um, but it's um, but but that's what any creative person wants. You want the opportunity to to feel like you're really stepping out there. You're stepping outside what you would have done and do something new. And so that's genuinely what he wants. And if you if you're not doing that, he'll you know send you back. <laughs> to do it again so is there a backstory to the song um, the Lunars I, <clears throat> excuse me the Lunars I got five on it uh, in the the get out yeah the really yeah, yeah so what's the so what's the story what's the short version so uh I think Got Five on it was in the script. That's my mem memory. And the reason is because it's used as this great way to get to know the family that's at the center of, of the story. You know, any movie, you want to get to know the characters, but you don't want them to just talk to you and say, I'm the dad, and I, you know. So the, in, the, in the setup of the, the movie, you see the four of them enjoying that song. And each to each of them of their own way, and, and they have a conversation around the song, and and, um, and it's a great way to see how they interact together because each one of them kind of contributes to that. So then, um, but one thing Jordan loves to do is he loves to twist things. He loves to take something that you know, think of one way and do it in a way that kind of ruins it for you, but in a really great way. <laughs> so of course, one of the ways he had to do that was turn it into this chilling uh, piece of work, and. Um, and the, the great thing about it was that I realized 
you know, at the beginning of Us, he said to me, so, you know, the story's about duality, obviously. So do some things, you know, give me some instruments that don't belong together. And that was my initial, you know, experiment. So then when it came time to, to mess with I've Got Five on it, um, I noticed that it's it's got two melodies. You know, it's got the high melody and the low one. It's a, it's duality in itself. Yes, so, it um, I thought you know this this is too coincidentally perfect. You know, so um, <laughs> and then there's Jordan behind it. Right, right, like, and George's yeah, behind it. Yeah, then you're like, okay, now I get my right. Exactly. Yeah. So um, and the thing was is that we you know he didn't start with that idea as being the um, in the climactic scene. But when, but after the response to the trailer, out, out. right, you know, he was really like, okay, guess what? We're putting this in, yeah. and, and so, um, what else about that? Just, I think that's the story. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's, that's truly from a fan's response, exactly how it was. It's, a, it's obviously a, a, a song everyone grew up liking, yep. but when everyone heard the new rendition of it, people was like, yo, yeah, I was like, I was going, yeah. I was, oh wow, that's amazing. And like, I remember the movie and the scene and just like, you know, hearing it in the beginning in the car, then hearing like the added pieces to right. it, the, the spine chill to it. Like, I don't even remember what the original was really like. You know? and that's all I mean. it's, it's, it is amazing work. But uh, we were talking about us. Can you talk about how, again, you, you guys' relationship, you, once you're going to get out, and that just went crazy. I mean, the response had to be a, 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 a crazy, and everyone loved it. And you knew that we were going to do us. Now, I interviewed Jordan a while ago, and he wanted to make it very clear that us was not a sequel to get out. Absolutely. When you had, when that was the book, when, when that is being put into perspective, what is your thought process into scoring uh, us? Oh, it, only just that, you know, that I wanted to make sure that I did um, yeah, it just the, the, the very best job that I could for Jordan, you know, and whatever his, it was clear to me that it was not Get Out 2, and you know, and that was just a really courageous decision of his, because you know, they would have backed the truck of money up to his house. Oh, yo, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> And, but he didn't choose that. He chose, and he chose to make something even scarier. Yeah. You know, and he, and and he chose to make a movie that's not about race. That's exactly what you know. he said. It's first, not about race. First three seconds of the Q and A, he said, "I want to make this perfectly clear. This is not about race." So, so I, I, I just saw all the courage, creative courage he was putting out there. I read the script. I thought it was really interesting, and and, and unlike Get Out, which you know. That's that's a singularly focused film. Us doesn't answer all your questions, and that's deliberate. And you're supposed to think. You're supposed to contribute to what it means. He wants your participation. I thought that was really courageous. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to do. I wanted to help Jordan realize that vision, tell the story that he way he wanted it told. Yeah. And I was down for anything that that did. So so. Yeah, I totally agree. That's, that's, that was my take on that. I, and it was interesting because a group of friends, we all went, and upon reviewing it, we all had different thoughts. Which yeah. is the best part because everyone got something out of it. That's why I actually love the movie. But you read the script. And when I saw the movie, the first time, I was like, I gotta see it right away again. Because it was just things that just, I, I had to do. Oh, great. And, and, but reading the script, I mean, how challenging is that, considering this guy's work, and you like, I got a job to do with this. Well, it, you got to read, so reading a script, there's, I mean, it's there on the page, but there's so much you don't get in movie that's in a script. You can't tell what the camera lingers on can totally change. Even just, if two people are having uh, having a conversation and the camera is following the person who's reacting, is totally different than the cameras on their face. And you don't know the choices the director's gonna make. Yeah. You also don't know the pacing of a scene. You can read it one way, but the way it's cut together, it might play totally different. So, you always, it's, it's great to read the script, it's, it's, it, but, you don't really, there's a lot that you miss until yeah. you watch it and you're like, oh. So, um, so I just, I wanted to, when he told me it's about, you know, experiment with instruments, I wasn't, I did him all these 
demos, and I didn't even have scenes in mind. You know, I was just do I was just doing demos, and I didn't even tell him. I didn't even give them names that would make him think that they were something. I just numbered them. But the reason was not. The reason was because I wanted him. I wanted his reaction. You know, like I thought if he likes it, I'll find out. Like, and so some of them, how I'd find out would be likely to say, but I'd watch the rough cut, and it's like some of them would be in, in the rough cut is like adding to the what they call the temp score. You know? I go, oh, that, you know, that one's speaking to him, you know. And then, and also it would be in a scene that maybe I didn't expect, and that's that's just that just added to the level of creative exploration. And eventually, and some things worked, and some didn't, and some changed. And, but you kind of just you start trying to just come from a creative place, and then you see what the connective thread is. Yeah. Okay, I gotta just say for our last question. I mean, the dynamics with you two is feeling like Hans Zimmer and Christopher Nolan. The pairing needs to stay together. Thank you. Is there a future project that you may be able to wait for anything about that could be coming our way? Well, we, you know, we talked about something, but it was just talk. And uh, he's got his, he's got, he's, you know, he's, he's producing, he's got so much that he's doing. And I don't even know if directing is in his in his short or long term plans even I don't know but I, I know that I'm like many calls in there so that's all I can call but thank you so much and I hope you have a good race a good rest of your college thanks a lot